Hey YouTube, Nick and Carrie here with Weekly Gaming Recap. Bringing you all your gaming highlights for the week of August 16th, 2013. Today's gameplay is brought to you by Electronic Superjoy, which is for PC and up on Steam Early Access for the small sum of $4.99. Uh, hopefully you can tell by the name. The game has some sick electronic soundtrack beats and I loved it. Um, need to keep those beats rocking you as the platforming is reminiscent of Super Meat Boy, so it's pretty insane and gets tough as you'll no doubt see. I die a whole lot. Um, <laughs> you die a lot in most of the yeah, games. Well, you... <laughs> this game is meant for you to die, so you never know what's coming, and um, the platforming is definitely very tricky. You, def you um, got through the first level and the beginning part of the second level and I did a boss battle. There's actually three boss battles, um, 45 levels, 35 different music tracks to keep you grooving, and also secret gems on each level that are insanely hard to get. Um, and every time you pass a checkpoint, it goes, oh yeah. And it's like a dude and a girl. Like the Kool-Aid man? Oh yeah! Kinda, yeah. <laughs> and it says it says like a couple different things every time you hit a checkpoint to keep you in the uh, the vibe there. Um, you'll need to bring your A game on reflexes because uh, there's a whole, I think it's like three or four theme levels with double jump, which is just crazy hard. Double and um, there's I hated that in Baldur's game. The beginning part is like. Um, Mario, only you have to hit a button to smash, so you can't just like stomp on their heads. You have to jump up and then hit the button to smash on them. Um, but it has the best text intro ever. I'm going to read it because it's just awesome. <laughs> it says, You lost an arm in the Disco Wars of 1515. You lost an eye in the War of Rock and Roll. You lost both legs, defeating DJ Deadly Skills. And you lost your tire butt to an evil wizard. This is a story of your quest to get revenge for your butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so uh, check it out. Um, there's a link below and the stream will be running during the whole time of the video and very <laughs> colorful. Uh, don't stare at it too hard or you might get a seizure. Awesome. Yeah. Warning, seizure warning. <laughs> First story. First story. Astro Base Command uh, is a new sci-fi sandbox space station building game. Uh, it's got roguelike elements and AI generated stories. Um, players can actually create their own race, including body type traits and stats. Um, so you can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, then you build your base with basic modules available at first, and then you can um, unlock others over time. Uh, you'll be writing your own story based on your crew and your actions within the game. Um, Sounds really interesting. Is so, it on Steam or Kickstarter? Right no, now? not yet. It's um, they just have their website up. Okay. Um, there's no release date or uh, anything yet, so it still sounds like it's an early development. But so sci-fi base building. Uh yeah, it's kind of almost like it reminds me of like Space Colony, but more m way more in depth. Anybody played that game? Uh, what was like the secret agent game, like Dungeon Keeper or um, rebuild the base, like that, and like people come to attack you? Yeah, yeah, but this one you can. This one's gonna be where you can man your crew, and your crew has different personality traits and stuff like that, and you can order them to do different actions, and that's why it reminds me more of like Space Colony. Okay, so you have individual control. It's not like you're just. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's what it sounds like on the. Uh, on the website. On the website. Okay. Uh, Call of Duty Ghosts had its huge multiplayer reveal this week. Huge. All huge. kinds of new hotness for the new entry in the series. Um, it is described by the team as the biggest overhaul to multiplayer since Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Um, some of the highlights include uh, customizable soldiers with the selection between male and female characters, a first for the series. Um, it amounts to about 20,000 different combinations of... Um, cosmetic and non-cosmetic gameplay affecting items, dynamic events with environmental destruction on maps, uh, new game modes include search and rescue, grind, blitz, cranked, infected, hunted, and safeguard. Jeez. 30 new weapons, 20 new kill streaks. Uh, there's new marksman rifles that are 
between the assault rifle and the sniper rifle, so they're for uh, medium to almost long range. A new co-op mode, which I'm excited about because I love co-op first-person games. And an all-new animation and movement system with contextual lean and a knee slide to go from running to crouch or prone. The only downside to the conference, or, or the only downside at the press conference, was the reveal that the in-game recording has been nixed, but they feel that since next-gen consoles already have streaming built in, uh, they don't kind of want to replicate two features, which sucks for people on current-gen platforms. Um, yeah. But then again, we haven't seen what Sony or Microsoft is bringing to the streaming table either, so it'd be kind of nice to have like a third option, I guess. You could either bring your own hardware, use next gen, or use their built-in stuff. It's always good to have options, but sadly that was cut. Sorry. I didn't use it, but I mean, it's, you know, options are good. I'd rather That's have sad. more options than less options. That's true. Uh, a new cross-platform multiplayer card-playing game called Combat Monsters will be launching for mobile and PC um, at the same time later this year. It's developed by Rubicon, and it's the latest by Great Big War Game creators. Uh, the game was inspired by Magic the Gathering, um, but it's played on a 3D board. Uh, 3D so you don't board. have to tap your cards? No, it's like you play with cards, but they become like people, kind of like the um, like the Hearthstone and stuff that we were playing at um, PAX. Do you remember? Yeah. You like you picked your cards, but then they had like different abilities and they did stuff. And mm -hmm. this one is actually going to support six player multiplayer matches. Six player card game? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hard enough time concentrating on one player. <laughs> Because uh, I kicked your ass. <laughs> I still have a hard enough time concentrating on one player. I don't care if I'm winning or losing. <laughs> the game is currently looking for votes on uh, Steam Greenlight, so um, check it out. It's I thought it looks pretty cool. I mean, there's so many new card games coming out mm -hmm. um, already, and you know more and more. So this kind of you know with the 3D board and it was the, the one that was just on uh, Steam Early Access. Um, Soul Forge. Soul, uh, yeah. Soul no, Fo Soul, Soul Force, I think. Soul Force. Yeah. And that's on free to play on early access. Mm -hmm. I just downloaded it. And the, there's a couple. And Hearthstone just went into beta. Hearthstone just went into beta. Yep. Jeez, oh, it's like Attack of the Card Games. Uh, yeah. Or Ever since Magic went Attack online. Attack of the Digital Card Games, rather. Now you can get all your your friends that still play Magic. To play card games online. <laughs> It's hard enough to get them online. That's true. 17-bit <laughs> uh, who developed Skulls of the Shogun are creating a new game called Galaxy. G-A-L-A-K-Z. Capital. That'd be more like... Galaxy. 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 Huh. Um, it looks to be in the same class of PC classic subspace and asteroids. Um, because... Or PC-based subspace and uh, arcade classic asteroids. That's where it started on the arcade. It's a top-down, open-world, physics-based shooter where you pilot a spaceship and have to use your thrusters to outmaneuver the enemy. Pew, um, pew. Yeah, lots of pew-pew. A <laughs> uh, whole bunch of blasting everything in your path. Uh, there's obviously the physics, so when you thrust one way in space, you continue to move in that direction while you can turn and still shoot. Um, the game is set to launch first on the PlayStation 4 in 2014, they did um, kind of hint to to launching first on the PlayStation 4, so expect it for other platforms after that. It's heavily inspired by 80s space animes, and there's, like, when you shoot rockets, there's, like, a huge rocket salvo of, like, 15 rockets that just come out of your spaceship. Uh, computer targeting comes, like, overlays onto the map as you're, like, targeting people, and they do, like, the little circle with the little reticle everywhere. <laughs> um your avatar guy is a little anime guy in the corner, and he's, like, always there. So as your ship's taking damage, he's, like, freaking out and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> That's funny. So it looks pretty cool. Um, you know, be on the lookout for it. We won't get it until next year, but it's good to know that it's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, the next game from Hidden Path Entertainment is called Windborn. Uh, the game is a social sandbox where you can explore the game's story or just go on play and create stuff with your friends. 
Uh, you'll be able to breed dragons and explore lots of areas with a big emphasis on community um, and gathering. So um, obviously if you're going to be building up your island and making stuff, of course you're going to have to actually gather the resources. So. Meaning, um, but friends will help you get them faster. Well, you can like? even you can either um, play together or play singly. If you, single players can choose to play the mystery like the quests, I guess at their own pace, uh, or they can completely ignore it and just build up your island. Um, you can play with friends. Uh, the developer is going to continually update the game through Steam um, with more content, which will be free along the way. And they are going to leverage uh, the Steam Workshop, Steam Trading, and the Steam Community Marketplace so um, players can create items wow. and blocks and sell them to each other, basically. So it sounds massive. Player economy kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, so... Sounds neat. Mm-hmm. What if Rainbow Road from Mario Kart was randomly generated and your Mario Kart had deployable wings? That's pretty much the recipe behind Krautscape, where the leader of the race builds the track dynamically, and should you fall off the side, your wings deploy. Um, you don't have any jet engines, so you basically have to glide back to the randomly generated track. Um, and it, the trailer shows off some pretty interesting stuff. There's like loop-de-loops and stuff, so I'm guessing where you can um, kind of power up the front of a loop-de-loop -loop and maybe purposely go off the side and then like deploy or well, your wings deploy automatically so like go off the side of the top and then you have wings and then you can kind of look down as the dude's creating the track so like if you're the first player well no if you're the first player you have to create the you track you are creating the track so how do you create like the loop -de loops and stuff i don't know they just show it's like as the player's going there's like a wireframe and i'm you know i'm guessing on your controller or something you can choose between like different track sets so you can, you lay down, the first person around the track the first time makes the track. And then after that, you'd have to complete laps. So the first person around the track, and then, so essentially the first track that you're playing is not the same track that the other person can build. Mm -hmm. So every time you play the game, the track's totally different. Because hmm. it starts out blank. Interesting. Uh-huh. Um... There's no release date yet, except they said expect it later this year. So sounds pretty far along. It's gonna have Thor and Loki from the Rainbow Road. Thor and Loki. Yeah, they have the Rainbow Road. What? <laughs> Rainbow Road. <laughs> in the movie. In the Avengers. No, in Thor. <laughs> they had a Rainbow Road. Seriously. I forgot. Seriously? I don't remember them having a rainbow road. I remember, I remember the oh big monster guy. Gosh. I remember they killed they the They broke the rainbow road, so that's why he couldn't come back to Earth. Was it really called the rainbow road? Yes! Or did it just look like a rainbow? That's what it's called. <laughs> Why don't they call it a rainbow road? Because that's what it looks like. It's like the yellow brick road, but a rainbow. And it leads from the main castle to... The the gatekeeper where he would put the, the sword in in order to let them go to the other okay. worlds or whatever. And then they broke that when Loki got in trouble. And I can't believe you don't remember that. Way off topic. Go to the next story. <sighs> I remember all what you're talking about, but I didn't remember it was called the Rainbow Road. So, I remember Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. <laughs> well, I do too, but it's just the reference. Okay. The new Avengers movie and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thor 2. Yeah. Just go to the next story. <laughs> you just don't like that I like Thor. <laughs> you could like Thor all you want, but I was, you know. Anyway, uh, Uber Entertainment has made a pretty cool new toy game uh, that da doesn't actually require you to buy figures. So unlike Skylanders or Disney Infinity, you don't have to buy any figures. Uh, the game is called Toy Rush, which is part tower defense and part collectible card game. Um... You collect cards and then you use them to build up your defenses as enemy toys try to overtake you. Uh, the trailers showed the cards like turning into like either the buildings or like the um, the enemies, and then when you hit them with your with your defenses, they like turned back in the cards and like fell down. Uh, it was <laughs> house of cards. So it was actually it was really cute. Um, 
squishy, absolutely. But adorable. now, don't you want the toys like from the game if it was really? I cute? would. They were just so yeah, cute. See, that's like the Toy problem. Story, like Aww. Big Baby. I would. Totally... You're never gonna get them. So sad. So sad. Anyway, the game uh, will be playable at PAX Prime at the Indie Mega Booth, uh, which is less than two weeks away. Less and weeks. Uh, the game will be out for mobile and tablet devices. Doesn't say when, though. Okay. You'll just have to watch your trailer to get your dose of cuteness. Yes. It seems Capcom is really focusing their efforts on Ultra Street Fighter 4 across all platforms this time, and that includes the PC version. Uh, while the PC version of Super Street Fighter 4 is no slouch, Capcom is pushing hard to launch the game as close as possible to its console versions, though they made it sound like it won't be day and date, it just won't be like last time. Um, Capcom also revealed that they've ditched uh, micro games for Windows Live, I almost said Xbox Live, <laughs> games for Windows Live in favor of Steamworks on the PC. Uh, however, what that means for owners of Super Street Fighter 4 is still up in the air. Um, most consensus will be that they'll somehow grant you a Steam key since Ultra Street Fighter 4 is an upgrade to Super Street Fighter 4. But, you know, hopefully you get a Steam key. It would suck if they said, well, anybody who bought it on Steam gets a Steam key, but anybody who bought it on Games for Windows Live, you got to pay $40. Or so. SOL? Yeah, that would kind of suck um we're guessing this makes the majority of gamers happy even though we know there are some holdouts for games for windows live because it does increase your achievement points on xbox live so some people like that um in addition to this comes word that games for windows live marketplace is closing its door on august 22nd 2013 so that was probably a big deciding factor in the decision to move to steamworks uh, your games for Windows Live games will still be able to be downloaded. You just won't be able to purchase anything from the marketplace anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I, they, there's rumors that other games like Bioshock 2 um, multiplayer will drop their games for Windows Live requirement. But uh, it's just sucky that you know Microsoft's this huge company and they're like, nah. Yeah, we're closing this down. Oh, great. What about all the games I bought on it? Well, you can yeah. still download them, but... Uh, Too bad yeah. to set, Chad. Oh, and if you have any um, points, you might want to spend them quickly. Since the store will be closed like two days after this airs or something. Yes. A teaser trailer has been released for Tropico 5. Hey. Uh, set to release on the Xbox 360, PC, Mac, Linux uh, sometime in 2014. You can be a dictator of your very own island. and You rule... can be anything. <laughs> you can rule your people with an iron fist in Calypso Media's simulation game. Um, this game is supposed to span centuries of the nation's development from colonial times all the way up to now. Um, a new dynasty feature will allow players to appoint in-game extended family to positions in power, um, which you couldn't do before. So you can have like a lineage. I guess so. Huh. Or you can, you know, if it's your sister or something, you'd say, oh, you know, you're now president of this or something. Um, there's also uh, the new maritime global trading system will play a big uh, role in how you rule. Uh, you know, will you export all your goods for money or will you have your people suffer? Um, or will you bring in the uh, Iron um, there's also new co-op competitive multiplayer mode that allows up to four people to build cities on the same island map. Wow. Um, and you can either share resources or declare war on each other. So <laughs> I've never played uh, Tropical with somebody else. I've always just played it. I think it's always been single player up until this point, right? Yeah, but it's, I don't know how that would work, I guess. I guess the maps are going to be bigger. Right. Um, you'd start in your corner and then... Kind of like a civilization kind of trade thing. Trade and then war. Hey, I'll help you if you war with this. Yeah, you could do it. Dictator versus dictator. Yeah. I don't know. So, it sounds interesting, but... I guess the question is, what would the end game be like in a multiplayer Tropico? That's kind of the... Yeah, because considering there's not really... What's like the winning, d deciding money, land. Killing somebody off. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah we'll find out. Know, as long as they don't get rid of like the core mechanic of the game, I, I guess I'm okay with it. Okay. Well, we're glad you're okay with it. <laughs> I 
Well, I'm one of the people that play the game. I know. So. That's why I wear glasses. <laughs> you speak for a sliver of the game players. We don't know if it's 1% or 90%, but some of them must think like you. Well, I hope so. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> Uh, Thomas was a lone creator. Mike Bithel has a new game in the works titled Volume, and it looks to combine stealth, hacking, and story into a very unique sci-fi setting. Uh, now, we know Thomas was alone, had a great story, uh, and the second video he posted has a pretty amazing level editor for uh, Volume. So hopefully we'll get story and the ability to make our own story kind of overlap. Um, if you've ever played the VR missions from Metal Gear Solid and wished you could design a cool level, basically you'll want to keep your eye on this game. Uh, what Mike showed off in the second video makes the process look super easy. You can just draw the level out on a grid, adjust the coloring, add uh, inactive props, active props, Sprinkling. enemies, um, stuff to do, and the exit, and basically you control your little dude, and you can even move the camera if you don't want to do it from a totally, like, overhead or three-quarter isometric view. You can even bring the camera down into, like, a side-scroller almost view and, I guess, get interesting with the, or creative with the level, and maybe you could almost make it into a side-scroller just based on how you drew your path. You know, it'd be, it might be confusing, but I'm sure somebody will figure it out. Um... You want to check out the trailer below and wait till the end where you'll get a link to the second video of the editor. And he's hoping to release the game sometime in 2014. Uh, like most people, I'm hoping this comes to PC and PlayStation Vita along with every other platform. So, but Thomas Was Alone did come to PlayStation 3 and Vita and PC, so our hopes are high. The gaming community... My gaming community. A.K.A. you. <laughs> the community, the 90% of me. <laughs> I'm the 90%. Uh, so a bunch of ex-Zynga Zynga. 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 developers have joined together to form... Wait for it. Pro <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic pause. Dun, dun, dun. You're not helping me pronounce it. I know. Doesn't matter. I didn't do this story. Uh, proletariat. Sure. Um, which we'll go is with that. A, that's, you know what? If I said it wrong, I'm sorry. Don't um, make hard words for Carrie to say. Yeah, don't make. Yeah. Or put the phonetic at the bottom. Put like Green Lantern Studios. Don't put some, <laughs> some shit that I can't pronounce. Anyway, uh, it's a new game studio that will be launching. You just insulted their studio <laughs> name. Holy crap. Shit I can't pronounce. <laughs> I don't care about you anymore because I can't pronounce your name. Well, I'm doing your story. The least you could do is either tell me how to pronounce it or something. We'll call them up. Jeez. I'm sure there's a phone number on their website. Gosh. For inquiries, call here. Just be like, hey, how the hell do you pronounce your name? <laughs> we don't want to interview you. We just want to know how to pronounce your name. I mean, I know my first name is hard enough, but jeez. Hey. <laughs> Anyway, they're going to be launching their first title, World Zombination, uh, to iOS, Android, PC, and Mac early next year. I like the title already. <laughs> uh, in this game, you can play the zombie hordes or the group of survivors. Um, the game will have an online guild system that allows players to team up and attack cities or attack each other. Armies can level up the machines uh, against the zombies, while the zombie factions can mutate, apparently. Mutate. I don't, yeah. Mutate. How? I'm not sure. Oh, probably like most zombie games. They're probably like special infected. Yeah. Uh, humans can ambush zombies as well due to their predictable nature of being undead. Um, according to CEO Seth Civic, uh, Zynga had, brought, uh, had bought them as an acquisition. And because they were a remote studio, uh, they, were avoid, uh, they were able to avoid a lot of the problems and complications and... Stuff that went on with Zynga behind closed doors. They didn't doors. have the Tropico dictatorship over yeah. them. <laughs> um, Tropico 6, be the CEO of Zynga. Yay. That's right. But they did learn, you know, both good and bad practices being there. And mm -hmm. uh, they took that to heart, basically, and said, um, you know, they cannot just make a game from metrics alone. And that, you know, the game actually needed to have a soul in order to work. No so, <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. Can't just be based on numbers? Did you know that? I'm sure once some... Like engineer figures out how to make the perfect game that conforms to like some numbers that a 
accountant has figured out it's going to be like nuts. Just just give it to Sheldon Cooper push, from push Big Bang Theory. Push the button and it's like, <laughs> game, game, game. Um, anyways, um, so they learned a lot. We wish them luck. Um, the game looks, the game trailer looks pretty funny. So, mm-hmm. um, can't wait to see actual gameplay. And right. See more, you know, or maybe as it a develops. Demo, yeah. Something. Mm-hmm. Be cool to check out. Yes. Now we are on to crowdfunding. Dun, 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 dun. We the people. I uh, the new fantasy squad based real time strategy game Project Phoenix. Wow, that's a um, mouthful. <laughs> just launched on Kickstarter and has already raised uh, more than five hundred thousand uh, dollars, which is way past its one hundred thousand dollar goal. Uh, the game combines JRPG design influences, deep storylines, and music from Final Fantasy composer <sighs> Nobu. Er, Matsu. Just say his last name. I can't say his last name. Okay. I can't say, say his, his first name. Nobu. Nobu Umatsu? Nobu Umatsu. Sure. Sounds good. Um, the soundtrack on the launch video is awesome. Well, I, um, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. I, I probably re-listened to it a couple of times. Okay. Um, so they got their money's worth. I yes. See. Um, and the game itself sounds pretty cool, so... Uh, there's still more than 20 days left in the Kickstarter, and they are well on their way to earning uh, a lot of their stretch goals. Some of their stretch stretch goals are, um, they're looking for like 1.5, 1.6 million to hit their biggest stretch goal at this point, I guess. Is that like voice acting stuff? Uh, I think so. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but there's like six or seven stretch goals that span. Because I like and those stretch hit, goals. I want to say they've already hit three of their stretch goals. uh uh-huh. Um, but they still got, I think, like four or five more. See, those stretch goals are like realistic, like hire better artists, hire voice acting. Well, considering they already have. Well, know. yeah, but you know, some <laughs> stretch goals are like, let's make the single player game an MMO. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> You're changing the whole context of the entire whoa game. there, buddy. I mean, it's like <laughs> one thing to say, like, let's make the single player game a two player co op. No, oh, okay. Let's Wait. add a dungeon. <laughs> yeah, let's add two levels. No, oh, okay. So to, let's redesign the whole game if we give uh, if you give us two million. I, I feel that the stretch goals of like adding people more talent to the pool is probably a yeah better. I, I want to say fit. yes, but I I don't remember off the top of my okay. head. That's cool. Um, here's a Kickstarter that'll make you go hmm. hmm. Starcraft Universe is up on the crowdfunding site. Um, it is not Blizzard asking for funds, but a group of fans. Now you might be wondering what. Well, apparently, they already had the blessing from Blizzard to make this game. Um, It's going to be a free-to-play MMO based in the StarCraft universe, if you couldn't tell by the name, um, that will be played through Battle.net via StarCraft II. However, you can use StarCraft II Starter Edition to play it, so you don't even need to buy the game at all. That's like... I guess part of the whole contract yeah. requirement dealio. Interesting. Um, there's a fairly lengthy amount of detail going in the project. I mean, they have units and lore and just all, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> that they're. I mean, well, the StarCraft universe itself is, is huge. <laughs> so the fact that they're making an MMO based in the StarCraft universe, it, it really looks like they're trying to incorporate as much of the lore and kind of expand on the little details as possible. Um, how that will work, I have no idea. <laughs> it's awesome uh, that they have that they actually have the blessing from Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's good. It's it's interesting. I I mean all the all the crowdfunding stuff is all virtual cosmetic I don't know if it's all cosmetic. I know some of it's like units and stuff, but it's all, you know, you're not getting anything physical with it, obviously. And it's just going to help fund the game to be done faster, I guess. But it's still, still a little weird. It's like you already won Blizzard's approval, and now you're asking people for money. Well, <laughs> Blizzard gave them approval, but they're are they giving them money to do so. it? Well, that's why they're asking uh, for money. It's just weird. It, uh, it's convoluted to me. It's 
It's like you it's can It's one do thing this. to say, here, yes, you can you can print a Mario t shirt, but I'm not gonna actually give you money to produce it. Like Yeah, but you would have to give it. it away for free. So that's the weird part. See? It's yeah, weird. I guess so. That's like the weird like yeah. it's gotta stay free, but they could still ask for money because they're doing virtual I mean the virtual things I get, like that's the only way they could ask for money, obviously. Unless they just ask, you know, five dollars to see your name in the credits or something. But it's cool. Uh, I want to see it. I have. I'm pretty sure I have like 20 gigs of StarCraft updates to do if I friggin' launch it. <laughs> Unless it's always updating their crap. <laughs> but eh, it looks interesting. I'm I'm kind of curious how they're gonna do like persistent MMO inside Star. Like I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if Only you can do time, that, what's out? if you can do that, it's like amazing that they figured out how to do that. They should get money from Blizzard just for figuring that out. <laughs> they... Be like, you did the hard part for us. Thanks yeah, I mean. <laughs> uh, Video Games Live is now taking to Kickstarter to fund their third album uh, because music publishers don't want to take the risk on a video game music CD, mm -hmm. basically. Yep. Um, they have held concerts all around the world with full orchestras celebrating beloved video game music like Zelda, Mario, Chrono Trigger, and even World of Warcraft. Um, the Kickstarter has some awesome rewards. Um, like one of them, you know, if you want to pay like $10,000 or something, you can actually meet with them in Blizzard, at Blizzard, mm -hmm. and actually help pick the tracks and... Um, I think it's two different ones. There's there's several. One's like five thousand to go to Blizzard and meet with the QA or meet with the sound people and tour Blizzard and the other yeah. one's like you ten thousand to... and you get to help them put the stage show together yes. for a track. Yes, yeah. Um Yeah. But there's I mean there's much smaller reward tiers Obviously. too. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> We only got two reward tiers, 5,000 and 10,000. 10, <laughs> um, they are seeking 250K. Uh, they have already almost half of that. I think they were at 95K when I, was, when I just looked. Um, they still have about 25 more days to go. Um, you know, I think this is going to be great looking at their past albums and, and some of their past concerts. I mean, right. were phenomenal. So I can only imagine that, you know, this would be the same. I guess it's all like licensing, huh? Yeah, like license all the a lot tracks. of it is. Yeah, it's got to be expensive. I'm sure. Even I'm if sure. you have the composer saying yes, you still have to go to the company. And they're working with several of the composers, but right. Yeah, it's still very expensive. On to out now. Uh, Mech Warrior Online developer Piranha Games has raised a lot of money for cancer research. Cool. Uh, they heard that a five-year-old little girl named Sarah Perrys uh, played the game extensively with her father um, until she lost the battle uh, recently with cancer. Um, so in honor of her memory, they designed a new mech called Sarah's Jenner, which is a unique chassis uh, champion model that Sarah favored, um, and it has a 10% experience boost. Um, it sells for ten dollars. It's still available, and all the proceeds are donated to uh, the Canadian Cancer uh, Cancer Society because she was from Canadian. Uh, Canadian. <laughs> Is that what you just said? No, cause you said because she was, and I said Canadian. <laughs> oh, I thought you said because she was Canadian. <laughs> no, I said she was Canadian. Um, she speaks Canadian. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Going to hell for that comment. <laughs> We're gonna get some nasty feedback. Going to hell. <laughs> Anyways, um, the developers were hoping to just raise like ten thousand dollars. They thought that would be a great goal uh, mm -hmm. and something to be proud of. But they have actually raised uh, over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow! In memory of this little girl, so they've actually um, raised a hundred and ten thousand, I believe, so far. Um, again, it's ten dollars. All the proceeds from it uh, go to the fund. Um, I just, I thought the story was awesome. Yeah, you know, that's that, cool. The and Mech Warrior is free to play. Yeah. So you don't even need to buy the game to, I mean, if you just want to give $10 to cancer research, you can. But if you want to check the game out, you can download the game for free. Yeah. 
and then you know give them 10 bucks and get a you get a mech and you help fund cancer research yeah and the you know it just they have um quotes from the little girl on their website mm -hmm. if you if you go to the page you can oh, see cool. how the little girl um her father had got her like shown her like a pack or something mm -hmm. of the max and she she'd said daddy that's not the right mac my the one that i like has the pointy top so she knew you know she knew like... yeah she knew which ones were, that she liked and which ones she didn't like and you know he said it's been it's been awesome that you know they've they've done this in her memory so it's a, it's a pretty cool. cool story i don't even know that much about mech warrior i saw the mad cat from the cover of mech warrior 2 that's about it Apparently it's, you know, well enough that a five-year-old could play. Yeah. So. That's a cool game. She I loved just... played it. Yeah, she liked, loved playing it with her dad and watched her dad play it. And she liked to beat up the bad guys and watch her dad beat up the bad guys, I guess, is what it says in the uh, on the website. So she sounds, she sounds like, you know, like a cute little a girl. it's a team-based shooter. So, yeah, everybody else is the bad guys. Yeah. There's a lot of bad guys. Always... There's always bad guys to shoot in that corner. <laughs> Never run out of bad guys. Never a dull moment. Um, a story we brought you, Race the Sun by developers Flipfly, brings PC gamers a mix of endless runner and handcrafted levels as your sun-powered craft races through alien worlds at breakneck speed. Um, the graphics on this really remind me of Star Fox or Out of This World. They're very um, flat but shaded. So it looks pretty cool, especially with um, the fact that the sun's setting in the background and you have all these like god rays pouring through as you're just zooming through crazy levels. Do um, you collect, what, like rings or something? Yeah, but you have to, like, the sun's setting, so the faster you go forward, you know, on a planet, the sun stays up longer. So you, you're, it's time and agility. Yeah, because you have to... You dodge have to keep going stuff. forward yeah. as fast as possible as the sun sets, and you have to dodge stuff. Yeah. Um, it's basically like two obstacles in one, and it drops August 19th. August 19th, and is up on their website for $10. Looks pretty cool. You can check out the trailer so below. technically today, when our show yes, drops. Yes, it would drop on Monday, which is weird. Not a lot of games drop on Monday, but it eh, drops on Monday. 10 bucks. Check it out. Check out the trailer. Looks cool. I didn't see a demo. Maybe they'll have a demo today. What's... Who who was playing? I, and was it a trailer that they were playing? Somebody... I don't know. I thought I saw a trailer or something where somebody was actually playing it. Yeah. I might be wrong. Trailer. Yeah. Whatever. That's what I said. Down below. Trailer. Trailer. Well, got it. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that one. <laughs> Wee! I did not spike Carrie's soda. Sometimes I wish it would. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, back in April, Cinemassacre and angry video game nerd collaborator Mike Matei uh, uploaded a video quiz challenging viewers to guess the games of the Final Boss Death animations uh, from 50 different NES games. NES um, or SNES? Back in April, it was NES. Okay. Now mm -hmm. he's just uploaded a new video from SNES games, so Super Nintendo. Um, you can try and guess all 50. I actually got about 30 of them. Wow. Which Look at I, you it's actually, I thought, brain. I thought that was pretty damn good. Actually. I thought that was good. <laughs> Your mom would be so proud. All those years wasted away. Well, I didn't play all of them, which is the funny thing, but I knew what they were. Okay. Like, yeah, they you can just, like, look at some games. Home Improvement and, like, Bobby's World. And then there's, you know, like, Yoshi's... There's, you know, ones you'd expect to see. Yoshi's Island, Final Fantasy. What about Mr. Wilson from Dennis the Menace? No, that wasn't there. But oh. Tiny Toons was there. Who's the final boss in Tiny Toons? Um, it's... He, he was... I want, to, I want to say it was, like, Dark... Um, duck, Darkwing Duck? No. Like, not Daffy, but who was... Who, Plucky. Dark Plucky. Okay. Because Plucky was a duck in Tiny He was. Tunes. Plucky was a duck. So I want to, and it showed a dark duck, like a shadow kind of thing. So I'm assuming it's like shadow Plucky. mean, mean Plucky or something. Mean. <laughs> I don't know. I never got like that far. Shadow Link. I didn't get that far in the game, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I just, you know. But you know what it was based on just looking at the game, like, oh, that's Tiny Toons. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some of them you could tell, some of them were I guess it'd be harder really if they hard. just showed you like the sprite of the boss and be like, what? 
what game this is. No, there's some of them that that people are like nobody has any clue like what they are. Well, there's a lot like, based of Super Nintendo games. Yeah, based on the forums and stuff, everybody's like, "Well, it looks like Double Dragon, but it's not Double Dragon." And there's there's a whole big debate. Come on, that. video game collectors, get on this. Yeah, and he doesn't. He's not. He's not really saying what they are, right? Because he, he's trying to be respectful for people that actually want to guess it. So, okay. yeah, no That's spoilers. Fine. No spoilers. No except spoilers. for Plucky and Carrie Gaby. Sorry, sorry. Good job, Carrie. Counter Strike Global Offensive is about to get more loot tastic, or actually is more loot tastic now, as Valve has seen fit to add random drops of weapons to the game. Yay. Um, you can also buy keys to unlock crates, which are also random drops. Yay. Um, for special skinned weapons, and there's two different crates. There's regular crates, and then there's esports crates. If you buy a key, you have to buy the correct key for the crate that you have. There's two different sets of weapons that come out of special skinned weapons that come out of esport crates. And then there's more weapons that come out of the regular crates that are themed to each level. Uh, there's over 100 different decorated weapons total. Um, they did add the M4A1 silenced and the USP tactical silenced back to the game. Um, a portion of the funds that they get from people buying esports keys will go to the Counter-Strike Global Offensive uh, purse of their competitions. So you're helping fund esports by buying the esports key. I will say that I bought a key of each and totally just didn't realize that I needed the crate first to unlock. Like I figured I if I bought the key, like I could go into my inventory and be like, yeah, I want to use a key on a crate. Well, I didn't have a random crate drop. So about two keys, they're just sitting in my inventory. But if you go to the marketplace, you can buy the weapons for like 50 cents. And the keys are like $3. <laughs> Some of the weapons are more expensive than that. but And the weapons have um, factory fresh, minimally used, battle scarred, and field tested Um values in parentheses but they don't do anything it's just they don't devalid or any nope it well i think what it is is some of the guns are going to be more rare skinned in different areas so it might be that a thousand uh sawed off shotguns in the nuke theme are factory new but only like one is field tested or something so that one would be worth more money there's a couple skinned from the esports crates that are already like 150 dollars because only two have dropped so far wow and there's also stat track weapons that they added that keeps track of your kill but it says it records it but i couldn't figure out based on everything what that was on there if it is just a number value or if it tells you who actually you killed with the weapon does it keep a log of all the people that have been killed with it or does it just keep like you know 50 just or... a number yeah. right so it's pretty cool if you want a weapon in a certain pattern just buy it from the stupid marketplace for 50 cents or a dollar and don't worry about the damn random drop key well, don't worry about the the condition of the weapon in parentheses because Val said that's fully cosmetic. So just because it's factory fresh or battle scarred doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it works better. Yeah, there's worse. no values at all that change. It's just a different color. And I wanted a different color. <laughs> I wanted a, I wanted a different color. Oh, weirdo. I wanted a different <laughs> color. I was, you know, I've been playing a lot of Counter-Strike, and I wanted just to change up my weapons a little bit, and I figured, <laughs> ah, what the hell. I don't know. I mean, I guess some of them are, like, crazy colors, so it might make you easier to spot, but I'm just stuck with the more camouflage weapons. <laughs> Whatever. That's how they're going to make all their money. 
Uh, Disney Infinity has lots of news this week, right before its lots. launch. Lots. Yes. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, Disney is banking on this title to get back in the green with its digital games, uh, who've had a very rocky history in the game development world. Uh, they've typically done really bad, like Epic Mickey just didn't do what they thought, and Epic Mickey 2 actually completely bombed. Whoa. Um, yeah, from everything I read, Epic Mickey 2 was like way over here. Yeah. Like everyone was like, if you took Epic Mickey and just made it better, we would have liked it, but you went like, wee! Yeah, they went like, totally left field, yeah. Um, if the game somehow were to fail, uh, it would be pretty disastrous for the company. So nobody buy um, it. Let's yeah. see what happens. <laughs> uh, Disney even canceled work on the Iron Man license game that had entered production and passed on its option to produce uh, multiple Star Wars games after purchasing Lucasfilm earlier this year to focus uh, solely on this project. You hear that, people? Um, this is the death of Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, the game, <laughs> the game has reportedly uh, taken a hundred million dollars to produce, um, which is pretty much you know a big blast, block, uh, blockbuster game production value. That I doesn't guess. sound like a lot to Disney though. Uh, like you're talking about a company that has billions in this like. Uh, they're like, a hundred million, we must get back in the green with this. Like, yeah. really? Well, anyways, uh, this Hail Mary pass uh, for the company, um, I'm sure is going to, you know, work out, seeing as uh, Activision Skylanders has generated over $1 billion in sales for them. Uh, and the pre-orders for Disney Infinity, um, I have heard, are very high, so... She's one of them. Um, I only bought the starter pack. I didn't buy all She's the other stuff. She's one of them! Um, again, I think also with the ability that uh disney can cross over you know with marvel or star wars at some point and just all the recognizability with the brand um i just see people just you know buying it up and i think if they add star wars it'll be bigger than skylanders uh, I'm, i think it'll be bigger than skylanders anyways but i think but I think, I, it'll, I think it'll put it'll it over be... that like cliff yeah, of I... like not just better than skylanders i think if they do the star wars piece of disney infinity right they have a chance to be like way like well, yeah galactically better than yeah and it took it took skylanders a couple of years to get to that mark so i think if if they were to either throw star wars or marvel in there they would they would hit that mark way faster way right faster so um the uh disney infinity has actually launched two new apps uh, the first one is called the Disney Infinity Action App, uh, launched for the iOS and Windows. Uh, it is going to... Uh, Windows Phone or Windows? I guess it's an phone, app, I so guess. Windows Phone. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be available soon for Android users. Uh, basically, you can take pictures or videos of yourself uh, interacting with characters from Disney Infinity. So, you know, think when you go to the theme parks and they have you pose and they're like oh go like this and then they you know digitally put in simba or something like that mogwai um what mogwai what the hell is that gremlins <laughs> they don't put it that's not disney they should anyway um so basically you can film yourself um interacting with the characters uh mr incredible of course jack sparrow from pirates of the caribbean and uh scully from uh scully <laughs> the X Files, Sully. Golly, <laughs> Scully and Mulder will make a surprise appearance at Disney Infinity. You heard it first. <laughs> Sully from Monsters University. Um, the video actions do cost coins uh, that can either be won uh, with daily check-ins and fo uh, Facebook posts or bought with in-app purchases. So they're already sucking money out of you. The game's not even here yet. No, you can just win it. Kind of like the play coins on okay. 3DS and Nintendo. Okay. Except instead of walking, you post a Facebook post. <laughs> anyway. Wow. <laughs> Shut it. Uh, the second app is um, launching for iPad exclusively called uh, Disney Infinity Toy Box. Uh, it will allow players to build and edit worlds on their iPads and then sync them with their worlds from Disney Infinity and unlock the decorations, props, and characters within the game. That's cool. Um, both apps are going to be free, and the toy box should launch a few weeks after Disney Infinity actually uh, is up and running. And then... And then... Then, I told you there's a lot of news. Mm-hmm. 
Disney revealed a sixth playset in the Disney Infinity series, uh, joining Cars, The Incredibles, Monsters University, Pirates of the Caribbean, and The Lone Ranger. Now comes Toy Story in Space. Uh, the set will include Buzz Lightyear and Jesse, with Woody being available separately. Um, unlike the other play sets, Toy Story will not be available at launch, but is considered uh, part of the second series. So um, it will come later in the year. Uh, right. Apparently it's supposed to launch, start launching in October with other uh, single figures also being announced uh, for the toy box mode. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph, Vanilla B. Von Sweets, uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, Rapunzel from Tangled, Phineas and Agent P from Phineas and Ferb, Anna and Elsa from Disney's upcoming movie Frozen, and The Nightmare Before Christmas's Jack Skellington. So again, they're all going to release... Um, in October as Series 2 and then into next year. Surprised that Wreck-It Ralph didn't get a playset. That's he has it. He's got the disc. Yeah, but he's not a playset. He's not I, a two-pack with a playset. He's I, just a I wish he kind of would single. be. I know. It's weird. Uh, and I hope they turn it into a playset because, I mean, that just... It's a movie about a video game. It, yeah, a video it just game seems... That doesn't have a video game playset. Yeah, it just... <laughs> also, uh, Toys R Us is gearing up for Disney Infinity with an exclusive oh, I knew it. I knew it. Infinite Crystal series. Oh. So basically, just like um, Toy, uh, Toys R Us has the exclusive Skylanders figures, it is also now getting exclusive Disney Infinity sets. Oh. Um, should bring back KB Toys, and then they can have like a war of exclusives. Uh, I know. Right now... Um, the only one out is Lightning McQueen. Uh, he has a special paint job that uh, also does move over into the game, and he earns bonus XP points and health in the game. Uh, you'll also be able to display your to uh, your special toys in a special area of the game. So basically, you can show your friends how cool you are or how much you begged your parents oh my uh, to buy this extra figure because then you show it off and be like, I have this that one. This is going to get ridiculous. And yes. he comes with stat buffs. Stat buffs. So that means you can buff his stats more than regular Lightning McQueen because he still has the slots. Correct. For other buffs. Correct. So he's he's got extra stat buffs to begin with. Then you can still both boost him up with the power disc. Oh. Um, it's the be ridiculous. good thing is that they are not priced more than the regular um, individual ones. They are uh, thirteen ninety nine. I saw on the website. Um, you're just gonna have to punch somebody in the face. To you're just it. gonna have to, yeah. You're just gonna have to keep <laughs> buying more of the same figures, just in different colors, to get the active, to get other stats. But or um, start paying off Toys R Us employees. Hey man, <laughs> give me that Skylander man. Give me fifty bucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of when my brother used to when he worked at McDonald's a hundred years ago, and he used to steal all the all the series toys for us as little kids. Hey man, <laughs> because he would unload the trucks and they would just kind of fall off. <laughs> you got that new Happy Meal exclusive, man. <laughs> so yes, unfortunately, I have to wait to play the game this week because I will be out of town for work. <sighs> but as soon as I get home next weekend, I will definitely uh -huh. be playing. Right. If you don't go and hide my items or open them before I tell you to, maybe <laughs> you better not. I'm not going to smack you. Um, it might be pre-alpha footage, but the 12-minute gameplay trailer below from Dying Light is super cool. Um, for those of you who don't know, Dying Light is a parkour zombie game. Uh, where you can do wicked cool free running, jumping around, backflips, and with your limbs kind of like hanging around, or what? No limbs hanging around, just running. You're not a zombie. You're a guy. Oh, well, you said parkour zombie game. Yeah, Makes parkour think... zombie game. There's zombies in the world, but you, you should be the zombie. You're now. You're a survivor. <sighs> um, as the name implies, there is a day-night cycle in the game where zombies get crazier at night. And the voiceover says that at night we are the hunted. So I'm assuming there's <coughs> bad things happen at night. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you okay over there? I was trying to breathe and swallow at the same yeah, time. Yeah, not a fish. <laughs> uh, the audio in the game reminds me of the Zombie Run app. If you've ever used it on your phone, basically while you're traversing the game... The main base is talking back to you in your earpiece, telling you like, oh, there's supplies over here, you keep going. They kind of have like a 
sounds like they kind of have like a tracker on you and they can see like where you're going and stuff. So you get live updates from them as they're watching you and they're like, oh, we need med supplies. Go in this. This is a hospital two blocks away. Run there and, you know, check it out. Only I can't do free running when I'm doing zombie run for real. So that's kind of neat. Why are you giving me that face? Because you're a weirdo. Oh, it's pretty cool. Um, and the game seems to be less of a zombie fighting game and more of a surviving game, which, you know, during the beginning stages of a zombie apocalypse, most people will be shooting zombies. During the end stage, people will be conserving ammo and trying to survive and run away. So this is more of the survive and run away. People have... You know, evolved and know that... Not evolved, but people are more concerned about their survival rather than getting 20 headshots. So you do have weapons, you can fight them, but it looks like there's an overwhelming horde where you pick and choose. So that's where your free running comes in. You'll be able to escape them very easily with your moves. It's coming to current gen, next gen, and PC sometime in 2014. And there's a sweet drop kick you can do. He like runs and he totally does a drop kick on the zombie and like hits him into a guard fence with like spikes sticking out, like pokes him and he gets stuck there. Pretty awesome. <laughs> I like that part. I was like, oh, drop kick. I wonder if there's more wrestling moves, you know, DDT zombies and stuff. Zombie wrestling. Oh, that'd be a good game. <laughs> now that would be probably pretty fun. Um, Rockstar blew everybody's mind this week with the announcement that there will be a Grand Theft Auto Online, and it will launch shortly after Grand Theft Auto V on October 1st, 2013. Um, don't think this is a game that you will have to buy as... With your purchase of Grand Theft Auto V, you get access to Grand Theft Auto Online as it uses the same engine, so you're covered. Um, it's labeled as a persistent open world game where players can band together to form crews, tackle group jobs such as bank heists, earn money, use character customization, buy a hangout, uh, buy a garage to store your cars, tons of upgrades. There's even an event editor so you can make new... Um, things to do like a new mission and there's also a race editor so you can make tracks around the whole city they showed that there is npcs so it's not just mindless violence that usually grand theft auto devolved into <laughs> um it seems like you'll be able to do arm wrestling and golf there's motorcycles so uh motocross and boats and planes and all kinds of trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah, there's also something in the boating scene of the trailer that comes up out of the water, and I can't figure out if it's just a boat responding or if it's a submarine, because it's like this orangey yellow thing, and the boat drives away, and like for a split second, you can see something else like coming out of the water, like from underneath it. But you know, it might just be like a boat responding, like that's how they respond, or maybe it's like actual like submarine. Because if that's a submarine, that'd be kind of cool too. Um, the game supports up to 16 players and has a mashup of structured activities, which Rockstar says numbers in the hundreds, and they plan to support this going forward with lots and lots of updates. Um, there was no word on if you'll ever have to pay for any of the updates, but um, really hoping this comes to PC now, because they still have not announced if it's coming to PC, even there was that whole, like, nvidia slip up a couple weeks ago or a week ago where they were like oh and you know when gta 5 comes to pc our earnings will go up because people will be buying video cards and everyone's like what and they're like oh no we misinterpreted that oops yeah so i hope it comes to pc with maybe 32 players that would be kind of or 64 players but it's definitely ambitious with what they're doing so i would like to play it on the pc if possible do it. Uh, new details are on the Harmonics next big project. Harmonics. Harmonics. You always say Harmonics. I don't know why. It's not like Harmony. That. It's Harmonics. Harmonics. I like. That. I think it even says it in one, the beginning of somebody's game. I forgot. Anyway, uh, Fantasia Music Evolved uh, is going to feature the Sorcerer Yen Sid and the original works of Ainan Zor. Wow. A music wizard in his own right, uh, having composed music for many video games, 
uh, including Fall Fallout 3 and uh, Dragon Age Origins. Um, Disney announced that Zer will make the original soundtrack and produce new orchestral ver uh, versions of classical songs. Um, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> uh, the game is set to launch for Connect on Xbox 360 and the Xbox One sometime in 2014. Um, they also released a new trailer showing the evolution of Disney's original movie Fantasia and how are they, uh, how are they are taking that idea and evolution, um, and moving it into their game. Um, lots of arm movements. <laughs> yeah, but they're taking, they're talking about like Disney's inspiration on making Fantasia and how, you know, it started with him revolutioning uh sound onto the video okay. with mickey you know steamboat willie and then um so they how... want to be like the next evolution like sound video and yeah interactivity like, yeah and that how they made fantasia um and how he how the movie theaters had the special uh speakers installed and stuff like that in order to, to get the full effect of it and so basically you know, they're taking in the next step, and now you'll be able to actually control the music and control the beats within the songs and stuff like that. So, I mean, it sounds ambitious. It sounds pretty cool, but that's, you know, that's what Walt Disney was known for doing, so. And now you'll need to install Connect in your home. Yes. That's what it says. Yes. As long as I can turn off the pictures and the video so that nobody can see me making a ridiculous mm -hmm. fool out of myself. <laughs> Just calmly hit the stream button. No. Another week and another clarification on the Xbox One. At some point, I'm wondering if they're going to have a new press conference and just, you know, say, forget everything we said. Here's what you're going to get. But anyway, um, it seems that that big old Microsoft has let it be known that there are controls to fully turn off the Kinect in software. So everybody was freaked out that it was always on. You can actually turn it off via the software. They did also say that you can unplug it, or should your Kinect break, um, the Xbox One will still function. You just won't be able to obviously use voice command and hand gestures, and you won't be able to play any games that require Kinect functionality, like Fantasia, obviously, without the Kinect being on. Um, well, are they going to make it better so that they can actually, so that the Kinect actually knows who I am? Yeah, I mean, it's Connect 2.0, so it has a bunch of upgrades in it, like IR tracking and low light yeah. tracking and stuff like that. It doesn't seem to ever, it can never tell where the hell I am. Well, we'll have to see. <laughs> um, and basically, if you turn off all the Connect options in software, but leave it connected, like your cell phone, and when you're trying to go to GPS or something, it'll tell you, hey, your Connect is turned off, do you want to turn it on? Um, they didn't say if it'll turn itself off after the game or if it'll prompt you to turn it back off, but you know you might have to do that. Also, it looks like the original Xbox One plans were just a little too ambitious where they said they were going to launch in 21 territories simultaneously as they've now cut that back to just 13. Um, the territories cut are Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Norway, Russia, Sweden, and Switzerland. And now there is no official release date for any of them, but basically Microsoft said as soon as possible in 2014. So if you pre-ordered and expected to get your console on launch date and you're in any of those countries, that must suck. Yeah. Because uh, I thought that was a pretty big deal when they said, hey, we're going to launch 21 territories at the same time. I was like, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe they're going to pull that off. And now they're like, oh, not so much. Just kidding. <laughs> Just well, you're 13. Sorry. Just it's like, kidding. Really? Just 21 sounded like that was like a big, like, you know, that was like, wow, 21? That never happens. And obviously, it. Sorry, guys. Uh, on to the Sony side of the next gen update this week. And it would seem that there is preliminary talks between Sony and Viacom to bring cable channels to Sony's in the works streaming option. Um, there's no name for it yet, and everything is still very, uh, sounds like it's very ground floor, but you can probably bet if Sony is doing any kind of streaming, they're going to bring it to their PlayStation 4. 
Um, it will only be, or right now, it's only a deal with Viacom. So stuff like Nickelodeon and MTV and the other channels that they have. Uh, if this comes to fruition, it'll be like Netflix for cable, but it'll only be the channels that they own. So don't expect to just cancel cable and hop on the Sony bandwagon and, yay, hey, we have cable for 20 bucks a month. It'll probably be, hey, we have... 15, six channels. <laughs> well, I think it's more than six. It'll probably be like 10. We have 10 channels for, you know, $15 a month. Um, so, but it's a start. That's good that stuff is moving that way. I mean, I know there's stuff like Arrow that does streaming uh, television. And I can't remember the name of the other thing, but it's, it's they're slowly starting to see that maybe they should take a look at some other services. 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 Um, your turn, my turn? Yeah, my turn. Uh, so, while we eagerly await Starbound, uh, two new videos have been posted to keep us at bay. One, two. One, two, one, two. Uh, the first one shows us just how high you can go past the clouds into space and just how far down it is to the ground. So, um, it starts with a guy basically like falling and there's like kind of like asteroids or something I guess up in the air uh -huh. that he just like jumps back off of and keeps going down down like goes down so he starts in space and comes down yeah and okay. he like keeps moving his he moves his gun so that you can tell that he's still actually going <laughs> um, uh, okay because it kind of is the same background like right. there's no more asteroids it's just kind of the same background and then all of a sudden the sky kind of lightens up and then you drop into the clouds and then you finally drop down into uh, whatever bi biome that you're in. That's cool. Um, and and it's then... called Starbound, so I'd assume there's some kind of space. Yes. Smack you. <laughs> um, the second uh, video shows us biome after bi biome that the um, game can actually generate. I think there's something like 70 different biomes or something. A lot of biomes. Um but those well, would between be, space and Earth and... But those would be all separate, like, worlds that you generate, right? It's not, like, 70 biomes in your game. It's, like, you pick one biome? No, it, it will randomly generate a couple of them. Kind of like... Okay, so, like, Terraria... Like, sections. Yeah. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. So, so it has, from... like, 70 to choose from, and it kind of randomly puts, like, say, four together. And yeah. And they're in your world. Like, from... Like, in, cool. originally in Terraria, there was, you know, the forest biome and... Uh, the underground and stuff like that. And then when they originally did the first update, um, it introduced the snow biome, but it only had a one in four chance of actually generating okay. on your map. So kind of like that. That's cool. Um, but this one's got obviously a lot, a lot more biomes um, that can generate. Um, and the buzz has always been high with this game. Uh, and the trailers obviously don't disappoint. Just make me more excited to play <laughs> if they ever going to come out with it. Um, the game is still slated to come out sometime this year, uh, but no official date has been set. Um, they've got, a, you know, like over, I want to say like a million pre-orders or something like that on their website. And I mean, they do, the good thing is they do update right, like almost daily. So we're, well, getting, they do, we're getting stuff though. We're not just getting like, hey, I'm working on the game. You're actually yeah. getting like a trailer screenshots like, yeah well you're, you're they're blogging every day yeah, yeah they, they're blogging almost every day or every other day with updates of fixes and bugs and things they've added or changed in the game so i mean there's always that's good i guess always 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 something going on which is good because you know that they're you know actually doing something with the game but right. it's just like okay come on can you <laughs> i just want to play the damn game <laughs> that's good i want to play carrie wants to play please let me play uh, WWE 2K14 just got a whole lot bigger, brother. Brother. Um, big boot. The big boot. This week, they announced that there will be a new mode combining 30 years of previous WrestleManias. Uh, the mode, surprisingly enough, is called 30 Years of WrestleMania. Is it uh, Pie Island mode? What's that? Pie Island mode? No, no Pie Island mode. No. Uh, you'll be getting 45 matches spanning the history of the sport and basically they've already revealed that the red and yellow Hulk Hogan is in the game. The Hollywood Hogan from WrestleMania 18 is in the game, which means that 
uh, classic rock pre-tattoo is in the game, um, but they had the Attitude Era before, so that wasn't a big stretch. Um, but also, Andre the Giant is in the game. Andre the Giant, yay! So, with 45 matches, I'm going to assume there's going to be a crap load more people. They are releasing the full roster today, which wouldn't be today, today. It would be yesterday at SummerSlam, since this is Sunday. Um, which will include uh, Darren Young, who is the first uh, gay... Openly gay. Openly gay... WWE active wrestler. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say that right. So there have been other wrestlers that have come out after, after their, they wrestled. their wrestling yeah, career, after their career. But, and maybe they were still employed but not wrestling anymore. So he's the first one to come out during his career. Um, everybody hopes they don't change his character because of it. They need to keep... And just because it came out doesn't mean his character needs to come out. They need if they keep going the way his character is going. Yeah, it doesn't going, mean that they need to fine. do the whole. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought he was his storyline is fine the way it is now. They yeah, it'd be good know. if they keep him the way he is. He's supposed to be a bad guy. It, I think it would be really hard to do a gay bad guy. Not saying that they couldn't, but it'd be. It'd I just, just think just I think if they tried, I think that would be like the end of his. Right. It would be bad. So yeah, I just don't think that the fans would. I don't, I don't think the fans care that he's gay. It's it's more like, don't don't screw up his his storyline story and yeah. exactly. don't screw him up just because he happens to be gay. Like right. you know, who cares that he is? Leave the storyline yeah, the way it is. Don't screw him up because of it. But the WWE is known for bringing people's personal lives into storylines, as we know. Well, yeah. So hopefully, maybe they'll avoid this one. Um, he did get a lot of support backstage, so um, that's good. Uh, maybe booking will uh, keep on keeping on and not screw with this character. This week's WTF is something that a lot of people were mad about. Um, basically, GameStop all of a sudden got new copies of Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii. Suddenly. Suddenly. Apparently. I don't now, know. Now, um, previously, people said that they were being contacted pretty heavily if they had bought the game from GameStop if they wanted to trade it in. So, when the store initially broke, um, everybody thought GameStop was hoarding the copies. It turns out that GameStop has the exclusive right to print this game. So the only way that it's going to get any more copies printed is through GameStop. Kind of sounds like places like Best Buy can get it, but only GameStop can order copies made because people were saying that they were calling Best Buys and some Best Buys had copies like months ago, like six months ago or something, which is kind of weird. But as far as everything I read... GameStop is the only one that can get copies printed through another co company called uh, GameDirect, I believe. Now, the problem comes in that they're selling the new copies as used for $90. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what they said is they're doing this because the market value of the game dictates that, which is partially true because it was a limited run game in the beginning, and so when all the copies dried up and they weren't going to print any more, copies on eBay are now around $200. The problem is, is the second printing... Is going to have... Is going to flood the market with more. So right. theoretically, the price should go down. And also, the second printing isn't exactly like the first printing. There are reports of some slight differences on um, cover art. So it's only going to make the collector's market more difficult... To tell the difference between did you get a second printing or a first printing? Yeah, first what are you buying on eBay? Is it a first edition, second edition? Um, really, the only reason I've heard that the game costs so much on eBay is because of the original limited run of games. So it's kind of like they created a scarce game and then they waited and then the game kind of blew up on eBay. And then they're like, oh, we can make more money if we release the game at $90 instead of $40. So that's kind of crappy. And they're also going to do it with the Metroid Prime Trilogy. They've already said that they're going to reprint copies of that. Because so, there are a bunch of 
they're a bunch of money grabbers. The I... bad part is, is it kind of puts fire in Microsoft's no used game sales. Because if you think about it, they wouldn't be able to pull this stunt if Microsoft got its way and locked copies to game consoles and there was no way to get used copies. They'd still technically be able to order new copies of the games printed. But they wouldn't be charging us $90 but for But the it. question is, is if they can't take the shrink wrap off and they have to sell it as new, would they be able to change the MSRP and not piss off Nintendo? That That's never been tested, obviously, and won't be tested this generation. It's, um, there's some suit with a book and like Barnes and Noble or something, and they changed the MSRP, but it was the reverse. They were lower than the MSRP and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. So this is the one time that it's not benefiting the consumer. It's benefiting people that want to buy the game and haven't because it's been like $200 on eBay, and they're like, well, it's only $90 now. I guess I can buy it, but it's still not helping you a whole lot because it really should just be 40 I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm not spending ninety dollars on a game. So uh, it's it's like lose lose all around. That's my problem with the whole thing. It's like if they would have just come out with like a second edition in you know a totally different case or something, and it was totally separate, and you'd be like, look, you want to play this game? We're gonna print a thousand more copies for forty bucks, and that's all we're ever gonna print. Yeah, I just I don't know. It just puts a sour taste in my mouth. Right. Like I and just a lot of people feel that way. So. It's, it's it's fine. Yes, I understand that, yes, they're in the business to make money, but that's like price gouging. Right. Like, I'm sorry, like, that's, it, it's illegal to do it in so many other ways. How the hell are they allowed to get away with it, This you know, doing it this way? Like, it just... Right, and the fact that you blatant, have... And they're blatantly doing it. It's right. not like... You have the only authority to print copies, yeah. and like you're like, oh well, now that it's copies like a are... monopoly, and it's I mean they're just and they're blatantly going, you know what? You want the game? Yeah, we'll give it to you, but you're gonna pay ninety dollars. You're gonna pay double the price. Right. Like, but they say just... that you're <laughs> paying less than eBay. That's how they justify it. I I would just boycott the game. Like, right. I, are you telling? I, or find you know it. At some point, hopefully, the market will correct itself with this flood of new copies, and you know, know. It just if eBay goes down, maybe then GameStop will have to lower their price, and maybe it'll come back to forty bucks if you wait it out. I don't know. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I just don't like. Yeah. The way they're going about it, I guess. Exactly. It's yeah. bad. Like they're just. They they're, could have... they're just basically showing that they're a bunch of greedy assholes. Like. <laughs> They could, could have you, packaged I mean, it with, like, a figurine or something for 90 they, bucks. Yeah, or the soundtrack or, you know, a game guide, something. like. But it's it's basically, you know, them stamping on the game. We're a bunch of greedy assholes, and this is what we're going to pay, you know. Right. It just... Ugh. Sorry. It's okay. Just, it annoys me. It's, it's not a good practice. We don't like it. That's why I don't buy from GameStop. Yeah. Well, that was all for our show today. Sorry to end on a sour note. I um, want to remind you to check out our friends over at StartSelect.net. They had two podcasts this week. I didn't see the third one go up today, but maybe it will. I'm not sure. Um, normally it's three, though. Normally it's two or three, depending on what they get around to. Uh, check us out on our website at uh, www.weeklygamingrecap.com. You can also uh, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash wgamingrecap. And if you want to send us an email with your thoughts or you want us to check out a game or... Send us free at, stuff. Cool. Yell at us or send us free stuff. No, don't always, yell at us. You can yell at me. I don't care. No. Um, you can always email us at the email address show at weeklygamingrecap.com. And remember to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Until next time... See you, See you later. later.